Hi, this is Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge with a quick video showing you how to make authentic vintage map designs with my new Vintage Nautical Map Maker Pack. This huge pack contains loads of resources, authentic paper parchment backgrounds, genuine vintage illustrations which have all been bundled up into a handy symbols library, seamless repeat patterns and vector brushes. I'll now show you how to use each of these. The first thing I'm going to do is place one of the parchment backgrounds as the base of my design. To do this, all I need to do is access the file and place menu here. Locate one of the files. I'm going to use one of the JPEGs here. Select it and click place. Now you see this little icon appears. So all you do is click where you'd like it to be, like that. Uh, I'm going to scale it down, fit my artboard here, and rotate it. Just make it fit a bit better. And there I have a background. Next I'm going to create a border using one of the brushes. As you can see here, I've supplied a range of brushes and we have shorelines. These are great for drawing coastlines and islands. Um, we have uh, a scale measurement brush here, various outlines, straight ones and dots and dashes. And finally, we have the border brushes here, which I'm going to demonstrate how to use now. You can apply vector brushes to any vector shape. And I'm going to use the rectangle tool in this case um, to make a basic oblong. And then I'll apply one of the board brushes to it. So to do this, make sure you've got your vector shape selected and simply click on one of the uh, icons here. Now to change the thickness of the border, because this looks a little thin, all you do is increase or decrease the stroke size. So I think that looks quite good, maybe three and a half. Yeah. If you want to swap in um, one of the other brushes, just simply click on it and you can exchange them like so. If you want to change the color of your border, just do so here in the color tab like so. But I like it how it was before, so I'm going to stick with the brown. I'm now going to apply the shoreline brush to the heart shape that I have uh, created previously um, and turn it into an island. Again, so I'm selecting the shape here and I just click on the shoreline brush there and thicken it up a little bit. As you can see, we've got little tiny waves going around the edge. Now, there are two shoreline brushes provided. Um, the other one is a flipped version, so you can basically turn the shoreline inside the shape rather than outside the shape. Now I'm going to add some of the illustrations from the symbols library. Um, I've included loads of different things. So we've got islands, we've got uh, ships, mountains, trees, and uh, a few buildings, and even a little compass here. And so to add them to your document, it's literally as simple as dragging and dropping. So I've got this one selected here, and I just pull it out and drop it in like so. And there's a couple of islands, and to scale them, it's just like scaling any other vector. So just scale them like that. Now I'd like the uh, proportions of the waves to be similar to the island that I've created here. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger there. And the same there. Now, if you want to change the color of these, it's really easy. You just double click either on the instance of the symbol on your artboard or on the symbol here on the symbols tab and click OK and a little version of your symbol will appear there. Everything else will be greyed out. You just select it and go to colour tab and just change it there. 
Now, one thing you should be aware of is that once you've changed the color, it'll change every instance of that symbol that you've used, plus the original on the symbols tab. So it's a good idea to make a copy first. But to save that change on the symbol, just click this arrow here in the corner. And if you go back to the symbols tab, you'll see it's changed there. So I'm going to undo that because I like the brown color that I've already got. As I just said, uh, it's best to duplicate your symbol before you change the color. So if you want to do that, simply go to this corner menu here and click duplicate symbol and you'll end up with two. Now I'm going to skip ahead while I add a few more islands because you don't need to see me adding them all. And then I'll add some other details. Now I'm going to drag a ship onto there and scale it. And add a couple of monsters in as well. And I'm just going to scale those. Uh, maybe a few mountains to make, give these islands a bit more detail. I'm going to add some trees around the edge here. So again, the trees drag and drop. And scale all these together so that they're the same proportions. And you can see how quickly it starts to come together as a design. It's really, really easy. So I'm going to skip ahead again while I just add the final symbol details. I've also added the text here. And now it's time to add the overlays. You'll find the texture and grid overlays on the swatches tab here. And to add one to your design, you'll first need another vector shape. And I'm going to use another rectangle. So I'm just going to draw that over the top of my design. And instead of the fill here, I'm just going to uh, click on the tab. And as you can see, we now have an ocean. And obviously that covers your entire image at the moment so we want to use the eraser tool here to just go in and take out the bits we don't want so very roughly take that out like that I'll quickly skip ahead while I do that with the rest of the pattern. Now I've deliberately erased an extra little bit out here because I want to show how you can add the pattern back in um, using the blob brush. This is this tool here, just select it and it's like drawing with a pattern. So you just fill that back in and it completes your pattern. Now, I think these waves could be a little larger in size I and mean, they're a bit small here. So I'm going to scale them and do this. Go to object, transform and scale. A new menu will come up. And I would like to scale the pattern, but not the objects. So I'm just going to leave this box ticked and Top it 120%, and we'll see what it looks like. Maybe a little bit larger. Yeah, I think that looks good. So just click OK, and the pattern is scaled. Now I'm going to duplicate this this C shape that I've just made um, to apply another pattern to it. It saves me erasing all these gaps again. Um, so I'm going to go to Edit, Copy. And edit paste in place and then drag it to this new layer here 
and then I'm just going to click there and we have grid overlay now I'm going to scale that down a bit and again just leave the transform patterns box ticked there and I'll try 75% and maybe that's a bit much. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, click OK. One final thing to show you on the patterns before I finish the design is how to change their color. So I've got the C overlay selected here. And what I'm going to do is go to Edit, Edit Colors, and Adjust Color Balance. Now I'm going to just make it red. So I'll reduce all of the other colors here. As you can see, just click OK and color change. Um, and it's worth noting that a new color swatch will appear in the swatches tab. But I don't need that for this design, so I'm going to undo that. So the final thing I'm going to add to the design is a little dashed line um, just to show the boat's path. Um, so I'm going to select the brush tool here, select the brush I want from the brushes tab, and just draw it here. And you can repose by dragging the anchor points like so. And there's your finished design. Thanks for watching.